Hey, what's up everybody? Too Tall Toby here, and in today's On Shape step-by-step -step tutorial, we are gonna try to construct a 3D model based off of this 2D drawing. Now, this challenge comes from the Too Tall Toby YouTube playlist called Practice Models. It's called Stepped Pin. And if you're interested, you can give this model a try. I'll include a link down in the description. But if you're interested in more challenges like this, you could also visit us at twotalltoby.com slash practice, where we've got over 40 drawings like this one, where you're challenged to create a 3D model, and we're adding more every month. twotalltoby.com slash practice. All right, for this challenge, the stepped pin, what we'd like to do anytime we start out going from 2D to 3D is we like to think about how we're gonna construct the model, where is the origin gonna be located, and what will the very first sketch look like? And I think that for a model like this, I'm probably gonna start with the origin right here, right at the center of the model, and probably down here, right at the very bottom of the model. I think that makes sense for a part like this. Then when it comes to my first sketch, I think what I'll probably do is sketch a line over, up, over, up, over, up, over, up, over, up, and then I'll close the whole thing off right down through the center. I think that's what my first sketch is gonna look like. I think that, that makes the most sense. It gives me a nice foundation for the revolved part. Then for my second sketch, I'll probably create these cutouts that are in the middle. The nice thing about on shape is it makes it very easy to create two rectangles. So I'll probably create a rectangle like this and then I'll create another rectangle like this. And then I'll just revolve those two rectangles to give me that cut revolve going up through the middle of the part. Now, once I've got those features constructed, I think the next logical feature would be this kind of butterfly cut here on the bottom. So we'll try to come up with a solution for that. Then maybe I'll add this slotted area here that ends up on a planar face. And then to finish this model off, I think I'll construct these counter bores. So we can see here that these counter bores are eight millimeters through. 15 millimeters by six millimeters deep. They're on a 95 millimeter bolt circle and they're spaced at 45 degrees and two of the instances of this pattern appear to be missing. So we get to use the new on shape skip instances in a circular pattern command. So that's the game plan for this model. I think it's always good before you get started creating geometry in 3D to kind of think about how you're gonna construct the model, to look for any tricky features, to start thinking about how you're gonna construct the individual features. And I think we've got a pretty good game plan now. So if you agree and you like this game plan, be sure to hit the like button on this video. If you have any questions, leave them for me down in the comments, or if you're enjoying this methodology, let me know that down in the comments as well. And let's get into it here in Onshape. All right, so let's get into it here, creating this 3D model in Onshape. You can see that I've created a document called 2024 05-10 stepped pin. And now I'm gonna go to the front plane and begin my first sketch on the front plane. And this is gonna be a sketch of a line that starts here at the origin and comes over. I'll come over about 40 millimeters because that's supposed to be an 80 millimeter diameter. I'm gonna come up here, say six come across here like so, maybe about 20 more millimeters, come up here about uh, 12. I'm gonna come back kind of closer to the middle here. I'm gonna come up about 30, come over a little bit, come up maybe about 60, 70 millimeters here, come in, come up, come over to the middle, and then close off that sketch. So I'm using the auto dimensions that are showing up just to kind of get me close, kind of get me in the ballpark. Uh, but I'm going to be going back through and establishing some official dimensions next. Now I am going to be using what are called doubled dimensions. So I'm going to create a line here and I'm going to press the letter Q on my keyboard to convert that line to a construction line. And what that lets me do is lets me add a smart dimension here that goes from this point to that construction line and then cross over and establish that at 80 millimeters. Or from this line here to that center line, cross over and make that 120 millimeters. From this line here to this crossover. So for turned parts, this is really really, really helpful. We'll make that one 70 millimeters. We'll go from this line here to that center line crossover, make that 44 millimeters. And then we'll finish up with this upper section here, which has a diameter of 35 millimeters. Now the total height of this model is 190. The location to this point here is 155. The location to this lower step here is 50. And then one final dimension to this location here which is 18 millimeters. And there we go. Nice, black, fully defined, fully constrained sketch. So now we can jump into the revolve command. We can choose to revolve this entire sketch about this center line here. 
and that is looking pretty darn good. At this point, what I could do is go over here to where it says part one, right mouse button, and I can say assign material, and we're gonna assign the material from the TTT material library of plain carbon steel. And then we are gonna go over here to the appearance panel. We can double click here on the existing color and then choose mixer and maybe change this to a different color. Maybe make this a yellow, like what it's showing on the drawing here. So that looks pretty good. Maybe it could be a little more yellow. There we go, that looks good. And so we'll hit the check mark, close the appearance panel, and let's move on to our next feature, the cut revolve going up through the middle. So we'll go front plane, begin a sketch, we're going to get normal two here by pressing N and we're going to create a sketch of two rectangles. So a rectangle here, a rectangle here. Then once we create these two rectangles, we can choose to create a relationship between this point and this upper line here using the letter I. And then we can add another construction line here. So jump into the line command, press Q and make a construction line down below here. And now we are going to select that construction line dimension across that construction line to get the double dimension of 25 and dimension across that construction line to get the double dimension of 15. So the only thing left to define is the location of this step on the inside, which is 120 from the origin. And now we're once again ready to jump into a revolve command and the revolve axis is gonna be this axis down here. This time, instead of adding material, we're gonna to choose to remove material. So we choose remove, we see the preview updates. I love the way that preview updates and on shape. We hit the green check mark and there we go. We have now created that base shape as well as the revolve going up through the middle. So maybe I would shift N to rename this. I'll call this main shape. And then I will shift N to rename this one and we'll call this one um, inner cut. So now we're ready to create that kind of butterfly cut on the bottom of this part. And so I'm gonna pick this face. I'm gonna to choose to begin a sketch. I'm gonna get normal too, but then I'm gonna get normal too again, looking at this thing down from the top. It's good to know that you can kind of flip by pressing the letter N, you can flip your normal too. So I'm gonna take this uh, curve here, use project convert. I'm gonna take this curve here and use project convert. And then I'm gonna use N, get normal too. So we're looking at this thing down from the top. And then I'm just gonna sketch two lines, one going from this point to this point on that arc that I just converted and one going from this point to this point on that same arc. Let me hit escape. I'm gonna delete this extra line that I created and I'm gonna pick this origin and this line here and press the letter I to make those two coincident. And now all I need to do is add a dimension. Now this is where it can get a little confusing and this is where it's helpful to be able to look down on this thing from the top because now I know that that's where that 65 degrees should be. If I'm looking at it from the bottom, you have to kind of um, reverse almost. Uh, so if I do like a shift uh, five or shift six. So I'm looking at this from the bottom or shift five. So I'm looking at it from the top. You know, you kind of have to reverse your perspective to get the same thing you're seeing in the drawing view on that top view. But if you just look at the model from the top, then it becomes a lot easier to, to kind of keep your bearings. So now that I've got that geometry constructed in sketch mode, I'm ready to jump into extrude mode. This is gonna be a remove. It's not gonna be the entire sketch, so I'll press the space bar. I'm just gonna be removing this region and this region, and I'm gonna be removing that up to a face, up to a face, and it's gonna be going up to this face here. So when we hit the green check mark, we see, there we go. We removed that material and left ourselves with that kind of butterfly cut. And again, if we press shift five to get to a top view, and then we change our display style here. So if we change this display style to be um, uh, unshaded or translucent, so we can kind of see through it. Now we can confirm that that looks the same as the top view from our drawing. So you fly out this menu here and we'll change this to shaded with edges. So now we're ready to create that kind of um, a slotted shape that's shown on the front plane. So we'll choose the front plane, begin a sketch, orient our view. And now we're gonna create a line. This line is gonna start at the origin and it's gonna go up to a height of 75. And then we'll create a second line here, which goes up to a height of 50. And then we'll hit escape and we'll pick that center line. And if we go into the fly out menu for offset, we can see that slot is listed underneath there. So we'll choose slot coming off of that second line. You can double click on this dimension. You can change that dimension. It should be 15 press enter, press enter again, and that finishes that slot command. So now we've got that slot geometry there, and now we're ready to turn that into an extrude. So S key extrude. Onshape is smart enough to know that that's the only closed contour, so that's what it uses for the extrude. And this is gonna be a remove. 
to make sure that's going in the correct direction. This is going to go through all for the end condition. And then the starting location is not going to be right here at the front plane. It's going to be an offset for the start of this cut extrude. And that offset distance is shown in section AA. It's going to be 18 millimeters. That preview looks pretty good. And we hit the green check mark. There we go. That creates that shape as well. So now the only thing left to do is the counter bore and then the pattern of that counter bore. So to lay out the location for that counter bore, I'm going to begin a new sketch here on this face and I'm going to create a sketch of a circle. This circle is going to have a diameter of 95. That's our bolt circle, our BC. And then I'm going to drop in a point here and I'll just put this point right here, right at the peak of that circle. So now that I've got that sketch established, I can exit that sketch. I can select that point. And then I can choose the hole command, and this is going to automatically create a hole right there at that point. So the only thing I need to do is go through the parameters of this hole. So it could be simple, counter bore, counter sink. I'm going to choose to make this a counter bore. The hole diameter here in this field is going to be 8, 8 millimeters. Press enter, the preview updates. Then you can use the tab key on your keyboard if you want to advance through this box. The uh, diameter of the counter bore is going to be 15. And then you can use the tab key again. The depth of the counter bore is going to be six. And so if you press enter and if you press enter again, that finishes the creation of that initial counter bore. And so now all we need to do is go into this flyout menu here, linear pattern, circular pattern, curve pattern. We're going to choose circular pattern and the circular pattern is going to be a feature pattern. This is the one that always catches me. I always forget to choose feature pattern up top. So we're not creating a pattern of the entire part, just of one specific feature. That feature that we're going to pattern, you can choose a face off of this counter bore here. It's going to be the counter bore. And then the axis for the pattern, you can just choose a circular edge right off of the, the perimeter of the model. Now, the number of instances here is going to be eight. And then if we press shift five to get to a top view, we can go to this option, the new skip instances option in the on shape pattern command. You click that option for skip instances, and then you can single click on the center of this instance and single click on the center of this instances. And those instances are removed. And so now we can hit the green check mark. We can give this thing the final spin. Remember, you can press shift P. We've talked about this in previous videos. Shift P will hide all of that reference geometry. Now you can give this thing the final spin. Make sure that it looks like what you're seeing on the drawing. And if it does, and if you've established the material, which we've already done, you can choose down here in the lower corner, display mass properties, single click on the part. And that part is displaying with a mass of 2981 grams. And that is correct for this challenge. And that is your on shape step-by-step -step tutorial. If you enjoyed that tutorial, be sure to hit the like button down below. Let me know down in the comments what was your favorite tip that you learned from this tutorial. And of course, be sure to subscribe and come back for some more on shape step-by-step -step tutorials.